What's up, Archons? I'm Flightless Pheasant, and we got some more information uh, yesterday, actually, about the uh, summer event. And I'm very excited to talk about it. It looks really cool. Um, I have some thoughts and comments, and some of you know I did a poll to try to gather a little more information, and I think I'm going to talk a little bit about what the results of that poll look like right now when we're talking about this. But, for as far as the article goes, uh, this is... Uh, an article on their website called To the Victor Goes the Spoils, and it talks a little bit about what's at stake for the summer event. So here we go. A few days ago, we announced the upcoming Martian Civil War event in which players will take sides of a warring Mars faction, uh, the Elders or the Ironix Rebels. This special event will take place between August 16th and September 17th for English language, and a few weeks later for select foreign languages. That's... That's a change. They said August 15th to September 16th before, I'm pretty sure. So I, I, I think we're going to... I mean, that's just one day different, but I think clarification will be important. Um, there's no war without casualties, no conflict without consequences, and the Martian Civil War will have both. These are the spoils of victory and the consequences of defeat. Alright, here we go. If the Elders win, we will main see, them, see them maintain the iconography and color scheme of the current House Mars, while future cards will play into the controlling style of the Elder mindset. It's pretty cool. It's one of the things Mars has always been pretty good at, is doing sort of um, control and, and manipulation type things. Um, and so yeah, it seems like it'll be kind of status quo if the Elders win. Uh, victory for the Ironix Rebels will leave scars upon the House of Mars as its iconography will permanently change to that of the Ironix Rebels. The Mars color scheme will incorporate red and black accents and future cards of House Mars will lean towards what the Rebels do does best. Fighting. I don't know how I feel about a fighty Mars, but hey, it could be really cool. And I like the Rebels color scheme and I like their, their iconography, so... I, I think that's really neat. Uh, and there's more. Whichever side wins, it is they that will receive the first ever Martian Leader card, which is awesome. Because if you saw my Houses of the Crucible Mars video, I talked about that Mars doesn't have an official leader that we've seen, but I had some theories about who it would be if we saw them, and it looks like my guess is it'll either be Borka Rick or Memrox the Red, depending on who wins. So that's that's kind of cool. Much is to be decided. Much is at stake. Retailers participating in the Martian Civil War event must report all match results of the event to Ghost Galaxy. At the end of the event period, Ghost Galaxy will tabulate the results and the Martian victor declared at Keyforge Celebration in November. So we're going to get the answer for who won in November, which is uh, about a month. Well, actually, no, it's just a couple weeks after uh, the event ends. Uh, retailers may participate in the Martian Civil War event by ordering the event kit from Ghost Galaxy. Okay. So a couple of thoughts here, right? Um, I really, really like that there are consequences. And I like that we're going to see those consequences immediately. I didn't know what exactly to expect. Some of you know when I talked about this last time, I said probably whichever side wins, their unique cards from the event will be the ones that get reprinted and the other sides won't. I still think that's probably true, but it could, you know, it might not be that way. But I like that they're going to change the house symbol. That's a really cool consequence or potential consequence. Um, I like that we're going to get our first ever leader. That's really cool. Um, and the color scheme might change. Which, segue, based on the polls that I've been doing, if you look down here, it looks like about two-thirds of people right now are favoring playing the Rebels over the Elders. Now, based on the way these event kits work, I don't know if it's possible for there to be more participants on one side than the other. Uh, it kind of depends on what they meant by a modified Swiss-style pairing method. If what they meant by that is that only Elders will fight Rebels, then you need roughly the same number of Elders and Rebels in each event in order to facilitate that. But, I don't know. Um, the other thing I polled people about is what did they think about the format for the summer event? And I want to talk about this a little bit. Because events like this have happened in other card and board games in the past. And frankly, it's been kind of contentious. And, and not always something that people have really enjoyed. So I talked a little bit last time about how when they did the Return to Mirrodin block they, they, in Magic the Gathering, 
they did something similar with the Phyrexians, Phyrexians versus the Mirans, and uh, ultimately the Phyrexians ended up winning, which we come to find out was a scripted win, um, and that their cards were intentionally just way better. And again, I don't think Ghost Galaxy would do that. But Ghost Galaxy has proven that they're having a little trouble balancing cards right now. If, if Grim Reminders tells us anything, if it's 50% participation in Archon events across... 50% plus in all of the um, Vault Tours so far, and it's on average 6 out of 8 of the top 8 in Archon says anything, it says that they're having a little bit of trouble balancing cards right now. And so I think it's kind of a valid concern that if the way this is formatted is that when you choose which side you want to fight for, all of your wins will go to that side. And especially because you're required to bring the house pod that you get out of that pack. I think it's a valid concern if the, say, Elders cards are just strictly better. Or if they have a common that's just really redonkulous and easily facilitates combos with Grim Reminders. Or, let's say, for instance, here's, here's the real kicker. Let's say, for instance, right, that this... Uh, event is going to require you to play with Grim Reminders as your sealed. Which we don't know that it will. But that's another detail we still need. But let's say that it does, right? Because it kind of makes sense, because it's the most recent set. And they've got to balance this pod to go with something. So let's assume it's Grim Reminders. And then let's assume that the Elders get Key Abduction as one of the cards that can appear in their pack, and the Rebels don't. Well, we've all seen what Genka is doing right now. Or not Genka, uh, Winka. We've all seen what Winka is doing right now. So... If one side gets key abduction and the other side doesn't, then I would say there's a really good chance that that side's going to win just because they have better cards and because their opponent can't do what they can do. And that's a real concern. And that's why when I put this up, I ask people, you know, do you like the format? And about a third of people seem pretty happy with the format as it is. But there's a pretty good percent, about a fifth of people, who really wish they could pick which side they want to dedicate their wins to, regardless of which one they play. Which would help offset this problem a little bit. Admittedly, it's less thematic, but it does sort of prevent that, well, I never stood a chance mentality. Now, the other concern is if they've already scripted an outcome, which I don't think they have, but as another example of a format like this for an event that didn't go well, uh, back when I was really young, L5R, Legend of the Five Rings, did an event where you could play as any of the factions in that game and record your wins, and then whichever faction won the most, that faction would get some special art and they would like take over the throne and... Uh, the bad guy faction, the Scorpion Clan, actually showed up in huge numbers all over the country to make sure they won. And when they ended up winning, the company that was in charge of L5R at the time said, no, the bad guys can't win. We're, we're scrubbing it and trying again. That's not a thing I think Ghost Galaxy will do, but it's another example of how events like this one and, and, and things like this don't have a great track record and make me a little nervous, put me a little on edge. The third example I want to use, the most recent one, is at the beginning of the 10th edition of Warhammer 40k. So the most recent edition, this was uh, a year or two ago. They had an event where they said, okay, it's Tyranids versus um, Space Marines, and we're going to record wins. And whoever wins the most will win the battle for a specific planet. And the Tyranids ended up winning... And they were really unspecific about what you would win, and really all it turned out to be is that the Tyranids got their units released a little bit early, which was kind of frustrating, and that was more about what's the reward. Which is why I like this article, because this article talks about what is the reward, what are we winning, what are we, what are we achieving for the faction that we side with. Um, and I think these are measurable consequences. It'll, it might change the frames, it might change the, the uh, iconography, it might change the major mentality of how they work. So that's significant and and i don't want to poo poo this event because i am very excited i don't want anybody to think i'm not excited i'm just a little nervous i've been in the tabletop community long enough to see events like this come and go and to have concerns about this format and and that it doesn't always work out in fact 
I've had a really hard time thinking of a time when it did work out. When when I'm aware of that a game company did something like this and it felt satisfying and people were actually happy about it. But, that's not to say that that will happen here. Ghost Galaxy's been doing a pretty good job of being communicative with the community and being responsive. And I, I don't think they would craft this to fail on purpose. But part of the problem with a format like this is you don't have to do it on purpose. You can do it by accident. It is entirely possible to just not even mean to make one of the sides stronger than the other. And if you do that, then it's already a foregone conclusion who's going to win. Um, and again, Keyforge has some things to offset that. Like you have two other houses in your deck and things like that. But I, I just it's a concern that I have. And I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. There are other people who have that concern. You'll see about a quarter of people are not really sure about this format, whether they like it or dislike it or what they would want instead, but they're a little nervous. And I would say that's probably the category I'm in right now. Um, but the only other thing I want to touch on before I, uh, I let you guys go and uh, uh, we come back to this sometime in the next couple days, I'm sure, because I am so stoked to talk about this. And P.S. I left these polls up. I'm going to leave them up a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to link them in this, or I'm going to link to my community page in this video. Um, but the other thing I want to talk about before I let you go is it looks like right now we might end up with a new color and new icon for uh, House Mars going forward. Because the Ironics Rebels are, are pretty clearly ahead, uh, assuming that that means anything. Um, but if it does, then yeah, we might see a new change, which is kind of cool. I do find it a little disappointing that if the Elders win, it's kind of just business as usual and if the rebels win it's this big huge shakeup. but that sort of makes sense right if the rebellion wins it changes everything and if the elders win it changes very little but i don't know it's still just a thought that i had when i was reading this is like okay so the elders win and it's all the same and the rebels win and it all changes but anyway let me know your thoughts down in the comments i'm very interested to hear what people have to say i really want this to be a discussion i'm trying very hard to talk to people about this because i feel like i'm saying all of these negative things but i don't have all these i'm very excited i'm very very excited i'm looking forward to this in a big way i just really want it to work out and be good and i'm concerned because i've seen events like this before and i feel like they they've not been good in the past and so it, it puts me a little on edge but i but i don't want to give anybody the impression that i'm not excited i want everybody to know that i'm having like I'm, I'm i'm really really looking forward to doing this event maybe doing it several times depending on on things so put your thoughts down in the comments let's start a little bit of a discussion because this feels like a good opportunity for us as a community to talk about you know how we're feeling about this um and yeah that's all i have for you today so until next time later archons